I'm Laura Trevelyan in Washington and this is BBC World News America. The US Defense Secretary has a rare phone call with his Russian opposite number. The communication between Washington and Moscow comes as tensions are high after the collision between a Russian warplane and a US surveillance drone. There's a new version of the artificial intelligence chatbot which has been making waves. This one can create recipes, say the designers. Officials in Iran say dozens have died during fire festivals across the country. Many are using the events to voice their anger at the government. The wolf population of Europe is growing. Conservationists are pleased and farmers are not. Welcome to World News America, in the UK, on PBS and around the globe. We begin tonight here in Washington, where the US Defense Secretary had a rare phone call with his Russian counterpart in the aftermath of a collision between a Russian warplane and an American surveillance drone. Russia's Security Council says it will try and retrieve the wreckage of the US drone that crashed into the Black Sea on Tuesday. Moscow has told Washington to keep well away from its airspace, as the two sides blamed each other for the incident which took place in international airspace near territory that Russia claims to have annexed from Ukraine. The US says Russian fighter jets intercepted the drone, causing it to crash, but Moscow denies this. A senior official here in Washington says the US is also assessing whether it can retrieve the drone, which is in very deep waters. The US Defense Secretary said today the episode was part of a pattern of aggressive, risky and unsafe actions by Russian pilots in international airspace. And he said Russia must operate military aircraft safely. Well, let's analyze U.S.-Russia relations and just how deep U.S. congressional support for Ukraine is in the aftermath of this drone incident. We're joined now by Ron Christie, who worked in the White House of Republican President George W. Bush, and by Anthony Zerka, the BBC's North America correspondent, our resident sages. <laughs> uh, so, Ron, you've worked in the White House. Just how tense are things when the U.S. Defense Secretary has to call his Russian counterpart when a drone has gone down? Do you think this will have lowered the temperature? OK, stay with us, gentlemen, because we want to hear from you on another topic of the day which is the wildly popular artificial intelligence chatbot known as ChatGPT. The research lab OpenAI has released the latest version, which it says is more creative and less likely to make up facts. The new model can respond to images, providing recipe suggestions from photos of ingredients. Just take a look at what it came up with for this picture of eggs, flour and milk, for example. It can also process up to 25,000 words, about eight times as many as the previous version of ChatGPT, OpenAI says the bot demonstrates human-level performance on many standardized tests. GPT-4 performed at the 90th percentile on a simulated bar exam, that's for potential lawyers, the 93rd percentile on an SAT reading exam, and the 89th percentile on the SAT math exam, OpenAI claimed. But they warn it's not perfect yet, the company said in a blog post. GPT-4 still has many known limitations that we're working to address, such as social biases, hallucinations, and adversarial prompts. All right, Anthony, <laughs> adversarial prompts. I don't know what that means, but uh, what do you make of... You've got um, teenagers like me, and I know that mine are using it. So what do you make of the implications of this technology? Anthony Zerka and Ron Christie, please don't be replaced by bots. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. Our pleasure. Well, let's turn to the UK, where the new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, has delivered his first budget. The finance minister said the UK economy is set to shrink this year, but is no longer expected to enter a recession. Among the elements of his budget, energy bills for a typical household in Britain will continue to be capped at £2,500, or about $3,000, until the end of June. The 5p cut to fuel duty on petrol and diesel has been frozen for another year. That's good news for those filling up their cars. The duty on pints of beer has also been frozen to help, in the words of Jeremy Hunt, the great British pub. But people drinking at home will see a rise in taxes on other alcohol products like wine and spirits. The Labour opposition leader is not impressed. Sir Keir Starmer has accused the government of dressing up stagnation as stability. A short time ago, I spoke about all of this with the BBC's Rob Watson. Well, let's take a closer look at the troubled global banking sector that Rob was talking about there. It's been a turbulent day on world stock markets. There are fears that more financial institutions could face trouble after the collapse of the US-based Silicon Valley Bank. Shares in the bank credit Suisse plunged, ending the day down almost 25%. 
The Swiss bank's fall came after the Saudi National Bank, Credit Suisse's largest investor, said it couldn't provide any more financial assistance. The Swiss bank has struggled with scandals, legal issues and leadership changes in recent weeks. Our correspondent Michelle Fleury has more. Michelle Fleury reporting there from New York. In other news now, Britain is in the midst of one off, if not its biggest, day of strikes since a wave of industrial action began last year, sparked by soaring inflation. Hundreds of thousands of workers have walked out in disputes over paying conditions. The Finance Minister, Jeremy Hunt, is expected to tell Parliament that free childcare will be expanded to lure people back into the workforce. Police in Pakistan have been ordered to suspend an operation to arrest the opposition leader, Imran Khan, until Thursday morning. The directive followed a brawl between security forces and supporters of Mr Khan outside his residence in the city of Lahore. The confrontation began on Tuesday when police tried to arrest the former Prime Minister for failing to appear in court over corruption charges. Mr Khan says the charges are politically motivated. In European football news, Eintracht Frankfurt football fans clashed with police today after arriving in Naples despite being banned from attending tonight's Champions League match against Napoli. A police car was set on fire by hundreds of supporters. Smoke bombs and flares were thrown at officers who responded with tear gas. Local media said Eintracht fans were also attacked by Napoli Ultras. 14 people have died and several others are missing after floods swept through the streets of two cities in southeast Turkey devastated by last month's earthquakes. Among the victims were quake survivors who'd been living in container homes since the quakes. The latest disaster came only five weeks after the twin earthquakes in which 48,000 people were killed and many more left homeless. In Iran, at least 26 people have died and many others were injured while celebrating a traditional fire festival ahead of the Persian New Year. The authorities say the deaths were caused by homemade fireworks. According to videos posted online, many used the occasion to protest and shout anti-government slogans. Parham Gabadi reports. Staying with the wildlife theme, and it may surprise you to learn that the number of wolves in Europe is growing. Conservationists welcome the news, though others, especially farmers, say it's deeply alarming. Around 19,000 wolves are thought to be living across 27 European countries. Jessica Parker reports. And finally tonight, this is my last World News America broadcast and indeed my very last day at the BBC. Over the past 30 years, I've had the honour of working with incredible BBC journalists covering the most important stories across the globe. What a privilege to work with colleagues who've become close friends on our joint mission of bringing the story to you, our viewers. Most importantly, I want to thank all of you, our audience, who are at the very heart of what we do. Whether on PBS here in the United States, in the UK or around the world, it's just been such a privilege to bring you the news each night. The team here will carry on doing that for you, I promise. I'm moving on to new adventures, but just like you, I'll be tuning in. It has been an absolute honour. For one last time, I'm Laura Trevelyan. Thank you for watching World News America. Hello, two main areas of low pressure to look at affecting the weather in Europe at the moment.